Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit more about some changes to Ubuntu. And we spend a lot of time on this channel pointing out some of the ways I think Ubuntu is moving in a wrong direction, is at least in the direction for a channel and a system seeking to get away from big tech and big data. Remember, about half the people that switch to Linux switch to it because it's just a really good development platform that allows people to get a lot of work done with with uh, a lot of free and open source things, which companies utilize a lot to cut some of the costs off the bottom line. However, there is the other half of the Linux users. They come explicitly to escape the big tech that is all within us. And as Ubuntu starts moving down that direction of big business, it becomes a problem for those of us that are seeking to move to Linux to get away from big business, which is why why Ubuntu has been steadily dropping in popularity of people switching to Linux because more people are switching to get away from all of that nonsense. Now, the good thing about Linux is there's so many different variations and varieties that it's not going to be completely polluted. It just may poison a little bit of one well, but there's a lot of other wells to go to. So we talk a lot about some of those issues and things. But what I'm going to talk about here today is that uh, sometimes Ubuntu does really good things. And they're making a change in the next edition, 2310, in their PPA security, bringing things more in line with how Debian is managing things which is actually a little bit better and more secure. And we're going to go ahead and explain the changes in the uh, uh, Ubuntu PPA system. So we'll walk through what this is. We'll walk through what the changes. And I'm going to actually go into a virtual machine with Linux Mint based on Ubuntu. And we're going to show you what, uh, how some of this stuff works and, and uh, talk just a little bit about it, just so you can understand. If nothing else, this will be a good tutorial on using PPAs and what they actually mean under the hood of your Linux system. So we'll put some timestamps down below. So if you want to skip just to the news or if you want to go to the end and see, see how it functions on the VM, that's cool we'll go ahead and uh, go to whichever direction you want but to start what we're going to do is let's have a look at the article from omg ubuntu so ubuntu makes significant security changes to ppas for 2310 so this has to do with where software repositories are stored of course there is a gui software application uh, inside of ubuntu and ubuntu based systems like the linux mint based on ubuntu or any other ubuntu uh, system which they have not taken it out. You can also manage these things on the terminal as well. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what those are in a little bit. But let's go ahead and walk through the article first. So uh, the next one, of course, is Manic Manitar. So the update brings a significant change to the way PPAs, which are uh, personal package archives. So you understand a PPA, it, there's software in your repository. So if I want to install, in the example we'll use here later is Caden Live. I can use Caden Live on a flat pack. I can use Caden Live on the Ubuntu repository. And then I can also add a PPA. The PPA is managed by the Caden Live team, which is always going to push out the latest version. So if I do not like flat packs, but I do want the latest version of Caden Live, I can use the PPA. Not every software package has PPAs, but a lot of your big ones do. I believe LibreOffice may have a PPA. I know Caden Live does because I use it frequently. And uh, I think OBS has a PPA, so you can get the latest changes in feature systems inside of there without relying on you know your repository to change, especially for something like Ubuntu where it may not change those absolute new packages for quite a while once it is released. So PPAs are a good midway across this that are supported inside of Ubuntu systems. So with these guys, you can add them via the command line, which is usually the easiest because you'll get a simple command on the website. We'll show you how that how that looks. Uh, or you can do it through the software and updates tab. Uh, so when you create this, they will create a and a list file in sources list, Etsy apt sources list, and then they will place a corresponding key ring. The article here says Etsy apt trusted. Uh, and mine on Linux Mint based on Ubuntu, the latest version of Linux Mint, it actually stores them in Etsy apt key rings. So slight difference in how the article is. I don't know if uh, if that's a change specific to Linux Mint, or if this is a an error in the article. I, I'm just not sure because I have not done this on Ubuntu in a while, at least not looked at it in close detail. 
So from 23 onwards, PPA are now going to be added as the DEB 822 formatted sources files, having their corresponding keys directly embedded into the files. So when you're adding a PPA, it's adding a list file. And then on another directory on the computer, it's adding the key ring so that the file as it goes to check the list file, it's going to go to a separate source for the key ring file in order to ver uh, verify it before it goes down and, and downloads the software. This will raise some issues that there's separate, two separate files. It will raise some issues with some potential weird man in the middles, and it can raise a few other issues as well. Of course, there are problems with PPAs, which the article covers. We'll get to those in a moment. So uh, what the change is going to do is it's going to, uh, now it says here removing a PPA now removes its associated key. Again, I don't know if this article is accurate or if Ubuntu operates different for really from Linux Mint, but I tested several ways of removing the PPA off of Linux Mint. And when I did that, it did remove the key and the list file. So uh, PPA will now remove the associated key. In my case, removing the PPA does remove the associated key. So the article author here says that he used to go through and have to delete extra files after changing these out. I have not experienced that from what I can tell from my Linux Mint build. It does does do that. Again, I don't know if that's something the Linux Mint team did or if that's something the article uh, author does not have completely right. I, I'm not sure. You can tell me if you use Ubuntu um, in the comments down below and you're familiar with all the PPA processes. This is the article accurate with Ubuntu itself. Second keys are unique to a PPA and cannot be used to other repositories, so it makes sense to package them together. And the third, other keys cannot be used to sign a PPA. So it does make sense to do this. It's fewer files, it's fewer directories, it's fewer separate calls, it's fewer possibilities for something to get to interfere with your process. So I completely support this methodology. Of course, the uh, DEB822 source format, this kind of goes into the sources list D, one line format, and and why they made the changes and basically it's just uh, indicating where the keys are what everything is and how it all works you can read through that yourself it's linked in the article here now this will enhance the security and reliable of managing PPAs and that is absolutely true now there are some downsides to PPAs in that uh, a PPA itself is a separate location where software is at and those developers whether intentionally or if those developers are hacked they could have a change made to those PPAs unbeknownst to you that could install malware on your system of course the same thing could happen on on your main distro repository as well. However, the challenge that we see here is that there really is when, when you're having all these separate PPAs managed by all these separate people, and if it's small fly by night operations or people not managing or updating servers, you can see the risk of having a lot of PPAs on your system. So I would certainly not use them on main machines for, uh, you know, small obscure stuff that you're not completely sure about trusting. It'd be best to add the PPA, install the software, and then disable the PPA for a period of time until you know you can recheck it every time. So that's really the advantage that uh, that they're trying to do. And uh, overall, this is a good and a positive direction for Ubuntu to do. So now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and jump on over to a virtual machine and have a look at what this looks like in action. So here we are on a Linux Mint 21.2. One. So this is the uh, newest version of Linux Mint at the time I'm recording this particular video. And what I did is I went ahead and uh, went over to the Caden Live team release uh, because Caden Live is, is a good, reputable program. You can see it, the latest update was 18 hours ago. And by adding this PPA, I can use the repository versions of Caden Live uh, instead of the flat pack. But it will have the latest version rather than whatever one is inside of the Ubuntu or Linux Mint repositories. So uh, what they're going to tell you to do is first use this command here. So breaking down this command, sudo, of course, escalates privileges. So again, it's you always got to be cautious about copying something from the internet and pasting it into your terminal. But in this case, what this is going to do is it's going to add apt repository, means we're going to add the repository to our system, and then 
you call PPA colon and then the name of the repository. And so when you do this, then you're going to be able to uh, access information. So here's your technical details. It's going to be adding this repository inside of here. That's what it's going to do. But adding this will simply do it. And then the apt update is going to add this version of Caden Live into your software cache of available software rather than the previous version. Now, we had mentioned a software sources tool. This is packaged inside of Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based software derivatives. So, of course, on Linux Mint here, the main one here will be telling you where you're getting your Linux Mint-specific Ubuntu overrides. Your base is telling you where it's getting your basic Ubuntu files, and then you can actually do a few other options here. Now, inside of your PPAs, you'll see here that we have Caden Live Stable. So this is the extra PPA that is adding. And if I wanted to remove this, I can click the highlight and I can hit remove. If I want to disable it, I can just go ahead and toggle this guy, hit OK, and then that will uh, be disabled. Here's extra repositories. Uh, here's various keys and things like that. All right, so that's the software tool. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the terminal itself. And let me go ahead and zoom this guy in a little bit so you can read a little bit better what's going on. Let me go ahead and do one more zoom in. All right, so we're going to go over to uh, Etsy apt. So inside of Etsy apt, we have, this is where the article said that the uh, files are at. So you'll see from the article here, uh, it says that it's going to create a PPA in the sources list and the corresponding key ring placed in trusted GPG. So let's go ahead and go into the trusted GPT uh, gpg.d and do a list directory there. You'll see that there is nothing in there for your Caden Live. But if I go into our key rings, there is where I find my Caden uh, Live GPG key. So uh, what we're going to do now is let's look at the sources list. So let's go into the sources list. And then inside of here, you'll see the official repositories, and then you'll see the separate Caden Live one. So let's go ahead and do nano. This is going to give us a warning that we can't edit it because I'm not doing this as sudo. That's what my red flag is down there. And then you can see this is what it is. So it's going to call the key ring, which is here. And then here's the individual source for the file over here. So you'll see that what it's giving us is it's giving us... Um, all of the information that we need in order to get in here and run our uh, run our uh, system. So you'll see that uh, there's two options here. This one, the top one here, is the one that's active, and the bottom one here, you'll see, has this hash. Uh, this means that it is disabled. Let me go back into the software sources again and show you what these guys are. So inside of your PPAs, this is the two here. This is the one that's enabled. This is the one that is disabled. So if you were to look at these individual guys, you'll see what those are. All right. So uh, when you have these, what the article is saying now is instead of creating a file that's going to drop a file in your sources list and drop a file in, in this case, your key rings, article says it's trusted GPG, uh, then what's going to happen now is instead of adding this extra one, it's going to add everything as a single file inside of here, making the security a little bit better and the removal a little bit better. So if I go in back into that software sources and I want to remove that particular uh, file there. So let's go ahead and remove this one. And we'll go ahead and remove this one as well. Now what the article is saying is removing these is going to keep the list files in there. And uh, so if I go back into my sources list, you'll see that the list file is gone. And if I go back into my key rings, you'll see that the key ring is gone. So I don't know if this is something the article has a few things incorrect or if Linux Mint fixes some of those issues. Uh, regardless, whatever the circumstance is, you can very clearly see here that uh, overall, anytime uh, 
you have fewer files condensing things down, it's going to produce a little bit better of a system. So that is why I suggest that this is Ubuntu making one of those really good positive directions, bringing things also back in line with a newer Debian standard, which, hey, means that we're getting closer to more of the Debian core, and that's nothing but good for for Ubuntu in the long run. So if you are using PPAs, uh, this should probably be good news for you as it'll become a little bit easier to manage your PPAs and manage your list files and all the other things going on inside of your system. And uh, if you're not using PPAs, maybe it gives uh, introduces you to why you might want to. In this case, it allows me to use the latest version of Kden Live instead of the repository version. In fact, let's go ahead and have a brief look at that. Uh, Hopefully it doesn't take forever to boot up the software cache inside of my system here. Um, but if I pull up um, Kden Live, so you'll see I have the Kden Live 23.4.1. Um, that missing media information always shows up the first time you boot it. No big deal there. So here is the absolute latest version of Kden Live based on their own repositories. Once again, Kden Live version 23.04.1. Now, if I go back into here and I do my search for Kden Live inside of here, then the repository version, it's giving us this here because the last time the cache was updated uh, was in, um, it was in the, with the repository. And if I go to the flat pack version, let's see if they tell me what version this guy is. It just tells me flat pack version. Well, that's not useful information. Uh, oh, okay, flat pack version 2304.1. So flat packs in the modern era might be a little bit better to use. Who knows? Uh, but back in uh, the day before flat packs or the wide availability of flat packs, the PPA is how you get the latest software. Of course, if a PPA is available, flat pack is not. PPA is the way to do it. Otherwise, wait for yourself. Do you want to do flat packs or PPAs? So there is a little bit about some of the changes upcoming to Ubuntu, their security, how they work, and what they mean underneath the core of your system. So with that, thank you for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.